My name is Carol Marshall. I'm a senior lecturer at Northumbria University in food science and human nutrition, and I'm a registered nutritionist. A stroke sometimes called a brain attack. What happens is the blood supply is cut off to the brain, which means it's starved of oxygen, and you suffer the symptoms which are shown in the adverts, regularly shown on the television, of a stroke where you have slurred speech and you lose mobility in part of your body. It's a silent killer and it does kill a lot of people. The risk of stroke increases with age, there is no doubt about that. Um, you do hear of young people occasionally having a stroke, but it is something where the risks increase as you age. It's just as the body ages and we get cardiovascular problems, particularly high blood pressure, because if you've got high blood pressure and then you get a blood clot, that can lead to a stroke. And over 150,000 people die every year from a stroke. They are very common, unfortunately. Not only do they kill, but they can severely disable people, and that's worse because then they're totally dependent on care by other people. It takes away your independence. One of the main things you can change is your diet. By reducing the amount of salt that you consume, that can have a major effect on your blood pressure. High blood pressure has been shown by research to be one of the biggest factors in causing a, a stroke. High blood pressure is measured by your doctor or a nurse and any reading of 140 over 90 is diagnosed as high blood pressure. Even slightly raised blood pressure, that's in the 120, 130 range, um, is still increasing your risk of having a stroke. And most of us aren't aware that we've got high blood pressure until we get some symptoms of it. So in the meantime, it can be doing a lot of damage. It's not necessarily the salt that we add to our meals or the salt even when we cook. It's the salt that's hidden in a lot of foods, um, things such as bread, breakfast cereals, biscuits, cakes, all processed foods have salt added because it improves the flavour, but it's also used as a preservative too. So if we cut out salt when we're cooking and we add less at the plate, then we're taking control of our diet and the amount of salt we consume. It's a major problem and the government have been working with the food industry to um, reduce the amount of salt in foods for the last 10 years. Many foods have now been reduced by about 20 to 50 percent but there's still too much salt out there. The government guidelines are a maximum of six grams of salt a day. That's about a teaspoon but when you sprinkle salt on your plate you can add a gram just sprinkling heavily and a lot of elderly people tend to do that. But as I say about two thirds of the salt we ingest actually comes from foods that we're not aware of it. A slice of bread has about 0.3 of a gram of salt in, bowl of cereal the same. So if somebody has toast and cereal for breakfast and they may have cheese and biscuits later on, it's very easy to have a lot of salt being consumed. The average consumed across the nation is about nine grams a day. You only need one gram of date for physiological purposes. Look at the labels. When you have that little diagram on the front of the label, look for green where the salt is. Don't go for red. Anything with a red label for salt, avoid if you possibly can. There are guidelines saying how much salt is a lot and how much is a little, and do be aware of those guidelines. Certainly when you're cooking for them, don't add salt. Use other forms of flavoring, herbs, spices, pepper, lemon juice, um, to give the food a lot of flavor, because that's what they're looking for. Um, if you're going to allow them to add salt, then try and get them to use low salt in the salt cellar and try to use low salt versions of foods. Avoid anything with a high amount of salt in it.